told to say a few words to the baby in the back. Have a good job. All right. Hello, my name is Chief Chris Settle with the Colorado Police Department. I'd like to welcome everyone to the Roscoe H uh, Police Building today. And I want to thank our business community, the community leaders, our Facebook Live viewers today, and those watching uh, as we speak, and most importantly, our Attorney General, Jason Yards, for choosing Culpepper to do this uh, very important uh, press release for this important initiative, as we feel that Culpepper is the greatest community in the Commonwealth, lastly speaking. As most of you know, human trafficking happens in the darkest corners of our lives, but also happens in plain sight. And every day, it includes our business community. We're thankful their Attorney General is bringing the 100% Business Alliance Against Trafficking Initiative to bear and will provide both valuable resources and education to our business community. The Attorney General and I agree our communities will not be able to exist without a business community. Also, businesses have very large footprints in their communities and their employees, their employees see things, hear things, their customers hear things, see things. Uh, business and their employees oftentimes are better than any open or closed source intelligence gathering that we can possibly get in the investigation. Case in point, I'll just bring a brief story. Case in point, I have, a, I have an aunt, Linda. Everybody's aunt, Linda. Uh, she's a manager at 7-Eleven. Been a 7-Eleven manager for 50 years here in town of Culpeper. I can tell you every morning I go in and get coffee, she can tell me everything and anything about everyone who walks in that 7-Eleven. So I can just imagine with the additional education and resources that the Attorney General is going to bring to businesses like this, uh, it'll be an asset to all law enforcement because we need our business communities to help solve crime. So that's why I'm very excited to introduce our 48th Attorney, Attorney General, Jason Yaris. It is so great to be here um, with you all. I want to thank both uh, Chief Settle, uh, Sheriff Chilton, uh, Maggie Cleary with the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, um, uh, President Amy Frazier, and so many of the others that are um, that are here to be part of what has become, unfortunately, an invisible war that happens in plain sight, as Chief Settle uh, noted. Uh, it happens in every community. It happens in urban, suburban, and rural areas. The world's largest criminal enterprise is narcotics. The second largest criminal enterprise is trafficking of human beings. It's a $150 billion a year problem. Uh, we've seen an explosion of it. Some of what's happening on our border, absolutely, the cartels are taking advantage of both the chaos there, and you can both see from the statements from the cartel members that have been arrested, those that brag on social media, that if you sell a narcotic once, you get a profit one time, but if you traffic a human being, that's a profit that happens over and over and over again. That should give you an idea of how evil human trafficking is, that it treats human beings that have such an intrinsic value as simply a commodity, something to profit, something cheap. But well, human beings are not disposable. Human beings are not something you can just treat to be exploited for your own gain. So we've been proud in our office, in the Attorney General's office, uh, working uh, with our federal partners, with Homeland Security Investigations, HSI, our local law enforcement, our sheriffs, our police chiefs, our Commonwealth's attorneys, um, you know, I like to say Commonwealth attorneys are oftentimes the only thing between jail and a cash and release program. Uh, they do incredible work uh, every day. Uh, but one thing we discovered is, is as much as we put a priority, when the Young Administration came in, we put together a human trafficking task force, we were involved in so many discussions, uh, we quickly realized that as much as we can do, we need help. We need people to lock arms with us to be part of the solution. Uh, when I say it's happening in plain sight, what it means is there's a good chance that you've interacted with somebody that's actually a trafficking victim and you don't even know it. It's estimated there were 80% of those that are uh, victims of human trafficking have actually interacted, for example, with a medical provider while they're being trafficked. In other words, they're sitting next to you in that waiting room, that doctor's office or with that nurse. And they don't realize this is somebody that's being trafficked. And so it's so important for us to be able to get those partners. And we uh, work with HSI and, and others, uh, part of our human trafficking task force, 
um, to expose human trafficking with down in Williamsburg uh, this year. It all happened because somebody saw something that was off and they picked up the phone. And I can tell you, everybody involved in law enforcement up here would tell you so many of the cases that get solved all happen because when they see something, say something. And so what we realize is when so many of those that are the victims of traffic are interacting with the general public, they're going to restaurants, they're going to entertainment venues, they're going to doctor's offices. We wanted to be able to get, or they're going to hotels and interacting with clerks. We wanted to work with businesses to give them the right tools. This is what to look for. And then this is what happens when you think there's something wrong. And so uh, we are so pleased to have, to announce that we are partnering with the Culpeper Chamber of Commerce. And I want to personally thank Culpeper Chamber President Amy Frazier. And we're going to partner with them to, to have individuals at the chamber that are trained. And that if you're an employer to get 100% of your employees trained in our training module, you'll be part of our 100% business alliance against trafficking. It's a simply a 30 minute uh, training video of what to look for and what to do if you suspect there is trafficking. And um, as I noted before, what it does is it amplifies everybody that's involved in law enforcement's ability to identify those that are the victims, those that are coming in or out, interacting with us in grocery stores, restaurants, and hotels every day. So what I'd like to do, assuming the, the multimedia works and I'm not good at operating heavy equipment so I'm going to rely on some of my team. We're going to show you a quick trailer uh, of that video to give a sense of the flavor of, of what it looks like. Right now there's a crime that happens in plain sight in almost every community across the country. It's human trafficking. And too many Virginians think it's not happening. It is. Human trafficking is the criminal activity through the use of control and exploitation of another person for the exchange of something of value. The international legal organization has estimated that human trafficking is a $150 billion a year industry. It does not matter the socioeconomics, any religious affiliation, gender, race, all of those are crossed when it comes to human trafficking. When I was a victim, I didn't see myself as a victim. Traffickers will make it seem like it was your idea. Human trafficking can be incredibly damaging, lifelong damaging for certain individuals. Polaris, that runs the National Human Trafficking Hotline, did a study a few years ago, and they identified at least 25 different typologies of human trafficking in the U.S. alone. Traffickers look like normal people, but they are people who are willing to sell human beings for their own profit. Every Virginian should have this belief that their fellow neighbor is someone they should both respect and love. And so many of them are being exploited by some of the worst criminals that we know of on this planet. We talked with an FBI agent and he said there is there is trafficking in every hotel in Virginia. Our businesses have to be partners with us to combat this heinous, heinous crime. Educating myself and my staff members on human trafficking would allow us to serve the community better by simply keeping it safer. If we're aware of what's going on and we know how to identify it and have the resources to report it, that in a whole is going to keep people safer. Teaching people what to look for when we're talking about human trafficking, it's really the awareness because that's going to be the first step in the reporting process. If you see somebody being trafficked, if you think they're being trafficked, Report it because something will happen. When you call and make a tip, you're saying this shouldn't happen to you, and I'm concerned, and I'm going to call it in. Thank you for participating in our 100% Business Alliance Against Trafficking Initiative. You are a partner to end human trafficking in Virginia. And so I'd like to introduce the president of the uh, Culpeper Chamber of Commerce, um, Ms. Amy Frazier. Thank you so much. Good afternoon, my name is Amy Frazier and I am the President and CEO of the Culpeper Chamber of Commerce. It is truly an honor to stand here before you today um, alongside Police Chief Chris Settle, Sheriff Tim Chilton, Deputy Commonwealth Attorney Maggie Cleary, Commonwealth Attorney Russ Rabb, and our esteemed Attorney General Jason Miores as we unveil this groundbreaking initiative that underscores our commitment to ethical business practices and community well-being. This is a transformative endeavor that we believe will resonate with the core values of our community, 
the Business Alliance Against Trafficking. In our continuous pursuit of fostering a business environment that champions integrity, responsibility, and compassion, we recognize the imperative to address societal changes that extend beyond boardroom discussions. Human trafficking is a grave issue that demands our collective attention, and it is in the spirit of shared responsibility that we introduce this business alliance against trafficking. This alliance is more than a collaboration. It's a resolute commitment from our business community to stand against human trafficking. By joining forces with the Attorney General's office, we aim to create a formidable coalition that not only raises awareness, but also actively works towards eradicating this heinous crime from our community. Please allow me to extend our deepest gratitude to Attorney General Miores for joining us here in Culpeper. His unwavering dedication to justice and the well-being of our society has been a guiding force and his introduction of this initiative reinforces our belief in the power of collaboration. Together, as the Business Alliance Against Trafficking, we aspire to set an example for responsible and ethical business conduct. We invite each and every one of you to become catalysts for change, advocates for justice, and champions for a world where our business successes are intertwined with a profound commitment and wealth of the, to the welfare of all. Thank you. So I'd like to uh, introduce uh, first some brief remarks uh, from one of our great partners, the Culpeper Commonwealth Attorney's Office, um, Deputy Commonwealth Attorney, Ms. Maggie Cleary. Thank you. Thank you, General. Um, and thank you, Amy. You know, I want to echo Chief Settle's comments that uh, part of the reason why we think that Culpeper is one of the greatest communities in the Commonwealth is because of our Chamber of Commerce. So if we could just give a quick round of applause. <laughs> I wanted to say, having having worked for a number of people who are standing up here, some things that I've noticed that they have in common. Um, General Miares and, and Russ Rab and I think Sheriff Chilton all have shared the common task of going into our organization and starting anew uh, and trying to decide how they're going to shape and build that organization and what their legacy is going to be. And I think that it's clear from all of us standing up here and also from what we've seen Attorney General Miares accomplish that his priorities are fighting crime, but also fighting fighting human trafficking, and we are so grateful for that. I also just wanted to say uh, quickly that if you've ever been to the Capitol in Washington, D.C., you'll notice all around the Capitol building that there's this image everywhere, and it's a bundle of sticks that's tied together. And if you've done some research on U.S. history, the theory behind that is that a bunch of sticks together are a lot stronger than one stick on its own. And that's actually the theory that our country was based on. But it's also something that I saw in practice in Attorney General Miares's office time and time again. And it's that theory that if we pull many different types of people together with different types of background and experience, we're a lot stronger and we can come out and fight crime a lot better. So it's not just about pulling together our law enforcement partners, the Commonwealth Attorney's Office, the Sheriff's Office, and the Police Office, the Police Department that's here today. It's also about things like BAAT and the Chamber of Commerce and local businesses businesses and all the leaders who are in the room today. That's how we can best fight crime, but really how we best fight human trafficking. So thank you for being here today. Thank you. Um, and now I'd like to uh, um, uh, introduce, before we take any questions from the audience, um, we have a great partnership with our law enforcement heroes, apply heroes, as I call them, that do so much to keep our community safe. And Culpepper is indeed a very, very special place. And so um, I would like to bring up Sheriff Tim to come on. Good afternoon, everybody. And thanks, uh, thanks for the chamber for being a part of this and, and certainly for our business people in the in the gallery here. You guys taking this plunge is gonna be huge for, for this area. For me as a new sheriff, um, I was just joking with with uh, Attorney General Mieres that I've seen him more this week than I've seen my own staff. So I've been, I've been in uh, Richmond for the last couple of days, and of course he's there. And for me, I'm kind of on tour right now. And it's, it's kind of a weird situation for a new sheriff because I'm going around looking for things to build Culpepper and make it better. And he's providing those things. And I, by meeting him this week and by being around all the, the uh, different lawmakers down in Richmond, it's, uh, it's, a, different, it's a different look for us many years here at the police department that uh, Chief Settle and I have done, it's, we didn't see that part of it. But being in an elected position now, where I'm going almost every day, is 
basically chasing that information that's going to make our make our area better. So, so we want to thank them, thank uh, Russ Rapp for being in the middle of this fight too. We have a huge demographic here. We've got such a very our very demographic, and we I don't even know how to really say that, but our demographic is so large on different pieces that we know this is happening here. I have one of the detectives from the sheriff's office, Dana Dotson, in the gallery there. She's the one that's going to be the go-to for our office for when it comes to many of the cases that come up. So Dana is one of those people that you can look to, you can reach out to her, but she's going to be somebody that's going to be a liaison for Amy's group. So I appreciate everybody coming, and thanks for, uh, thanks for Attorney General Mears. Thank you. Now, are there any uh, questions So if you look at roughly 60% of trafficking victims are trafficked for sex, roughly 40% are trafficked for labor. So you have a combination of that, and obviously what's happened on the border uh, due to the significant amount of labor trafficking. But we have an addiction crisis in this country, and so you've seen an explosion of what we call familial trafficking, which are those that are in such the throes of addiction, they're willing to traffic their own child or their own sibling. Uh, so some are a combination of foreign nationals, some are those that are from broken homes and are being trafficked. Uh, there's this misnomer that if you're a trafficking victim, that somehow you're either a foreign national or you're, you're the cartels that are trafficking. They're, have, the cartels are very heavily involved, but to be clear, sometimes it's an individual that they know they're trafficking. They actually, is, as has been noted in the video, and, um, and Tanya would know from our human trafficking coordinator, a lot of the victims don't realize they're being trafficked at the time. They think, uh, it's actually, uh, you know, they actually think this person cares for them. And it's a, that's part of what makes it so insidious. So it comes in so many different forms. Human trafficking is not just sex. Labor trafficking is a huge portion as well. Let me just end with this with anybody from the media that can make sure, because there's probably some folks here that are like, okay, what do I look for? What are the signs of, 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 of somebody who noted that this can happen in plain sight? What are the things you look for? I'd say some of it's obvious. If it's an unaccompanied minor with somebody that's obviously not under <clears throat> are they disheveled? Do they have lack any form of cash payment or any form of uh, identification as well? Uh, tragically, a lot of these traffickers will brand their victims on the neck. So do they have neck tattoos uh, with initials on them? It's actually a way for the trafficker to exert psychological control over their victims. Um, and so those those are a lot of, and a lot of just common sense as well. And then. What do you do if you suspect something? It is as simple as hitting pound seven seven on your cell phone. You text pound seven seven on your cell phone, BSP, that stands for Virginia State Police, and give us your tip of where and what, as much description as you can, uh, that can literally save a life. Um, and that's, as I would note, and I said before, so many cases are broken wide open just because somebody saw something. It could be at a rest stop, it could be at a truck stop, it could be at a gas station, it could be at a restaurant or a doctor's office. Uh, it can be as simple as that, and uh, that can be traumatic. So listen, I wanna appreciate everybody being here. I appreciate our, our friends in the media for drawing attention to this, because um, so many Virginians oftentimes think that's not happening here. Tragically, Culpepper, as you've all noted, is an amazing community, but it is, and um, we need your help to combat it. I wanna thank the Sheriff's Office, the Commonwealth's Attorney's Office, and definitely our Chamber of Commerce, great partnership with them, the Northern Virginia Chamber of Commerce, the Northern Virginia Hispanic Chamber, the Hampton Roads Chamber, and so many of others are coming alongside us. We really appreciate the business community being great corporate citizen, walking arms with us, and getting across the finish line to help eradicate the scourge of human trafficking. You have one more, one more question? Okay. Yes, has the state actually prosecuted a lot of these trafficking cases? Like, where is it happening in the state? Yeah, so- I talked to the chief today, and he said it's not really any specific Well, the, in the, the, the problem that we have is, number one, um, for example, a labor trafficking case, a labor trafficking case that was broken up in Williamsburg, could not be brought in state court because our, uh, our labor trafficking laws are so weak. It's actually a big bill that we're pushing the General Assembly it had to be brought to federal court. So a lot of it is because we have joint task force with both federal and state, a lot of it is brought in federal court. They have some enhanced penalties. We're also looking to change some of the language in the Virginia Code. For example, believe it or not, trafficking a minor in Virginia is not technically considered a violent crime. And we're also enhancing penalty against the, the buyers as well. So we want to go after both the, on both sides of the ledger, so to speak. Um, so it's multifaceted. But 
part of what makes this a very difficult crime to prosecute is so many victims will not come forward and will not fail. Uh, it's, it, it's, it's, a, it's estimated on an international level less than 10%, 10 of victims are ever actually identified. Um, and you gotta realize it's a hard thing to ask somebody to relive some of the worst moments of their life. So I'm proud of this governor for something that we championed last session and went into effect in September when the budget was signed. Uh, uh, finally, Virginia has a victim witness protection fund. And it doesn't just apply for little trafficking victims, it applies for anyone. But a lot of victims will not testify if they don't feel safe. Uh, it's modeled on the federal level, it's administered through the Virginia State Police, and it's the idea of putting the victims in a place where they feel safe and secure, they can testify, and having a real victim-centered, trauma-informed um, uh, care where they realize that, that part of their healing process, part of the way that they can power themselves and take, um, take back their life, figuratively speaking, is to testify against the person that's trafficked them and exert power on that person that is trying to exert power on them um, in such hideous ways. So it comes in so many different forms, both uh, labor and sex. Um, it's something that we take quite seriously. Yes, ma'am. Um, so trafficking and addiction are often, you know, yeah. and so how is this addressing that relationship? Well, that's multifaceted. I'll give you an example. Um, one of the things that we found in our office is some of the trafficking victims, some of the trafficking shelters want to be sober before you go and get trauma-informed care. And so it's almost multifaceted. We have to get victims sober and on the road to recovery from addiction before we get them on the road to recovery emotionally and healing from the trafficking. So, you know, we're very proud of the fact our office went after some of the largest pharmaceutical companies on the planet. Uh, the help fuel the opioid crisis, the fuel the addiction crisis. And so, for example, uh, over a billion dollars of settlements are coming back to Virginia. That's not money that comes to my office. We worked with our friends in the General Assembly uh, to set up the opioid bait method and that does grant funding. So I had the honor uh, last year of standing and having been at the ribbon cutting for the Men and Women's Recovery Center. First of its kind in a 150 mile radius, uh, just for women. Over 50 beds or later get expanded where women can go, and some of them obviously are, are victims of trafficking, can go to recover, to get uh, on the road to, to sobriety. And that's a that's an important first step. So, so many of these issues, you, you are very, very accurate. Addiction and, and trafficking go hand in hand uh, because a lot of the traffickers will use addiction to opioids or other narcotics as a way to control the victims. And so they often will uh, show up once they've recovered in a, in, a, in, a, in, a, in a state where they need to be the sober and get on the path to recovery in that trial before we can move forward on, on getting making sure they can uh, testify against their traffic. Last question. Yes, sir. You said you had facilities that people were going to, women or men and all, to get help so they can you know, testify against. Uh, how many of these facilities are you? Well, these are not facilities run by the Attorney General's office. The way the Opioid Abatement Authority runs is they are um, recovery centers that apply for grant money. And then the Opioid Abatement Authority that's chaired by Todd Pillion of the uh, Virginia Senate as the chairman. It's a committee that goes through the grants and then uh, provides the grant money. And some of its existing facilities that are going to be able to expand rapidly, they're, uh, some of them are brand new. And so what we realize is that Treatment in Fairfax may be different than what you need in Gaylax. What are the demands? And even what are the narcotics that you're, you're dealing with? Tragically, you know, opioid seems to be in every, in almost every community as is fentanyl. Um, and so we have aggressively expanded. It's, be, it's going to be the greatest influx of money to local government as well to treat uh, in person treatment for addiction that we've ever had in Virginia. Where do you have to go to apply? The Opioid Abatement Authority. You just Google Virginia Opioid Abatement Authority, and there's a website, and that, that shows you the process of, of both applying and uh, they have been expeditiously uh, overseeing the funds. So our, our kind of humorous joke we put it is that we sue we sue these companies. We get the we get the settlements, but they're the ones that distribute the money. And the idea is they can get uh, they can get the treatment the money for treatment that is both in person and in the community for those that need it the most. And some of our communities have been particularly devastated, particularly in South West Virginia. All right, thank you all so much. Thank you all for being part of this important day. God bless you all.